Greetings. There is big news today that Tesla is cutting 7% of staff as well as uh, some other sort of cost saving moves. Our, one of our shows that we've been sort of holding on for the last couple of months is a show entitled, Could the Success of the Model 3 Put Tesla in Bankruptcy? So the uh, fact that the news came out today, the 18th of January, 2018, I thought I would do a quick post on this because I think it's an important developing story. And even though we don't have all the editing to go with it, I think it's a worthwhile conversation to have. And there are five reasons we can think of why this bankruptcy could happen and, and why. And that's what we wanted to cover in this brief post today. <clears throat> This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your <clears throat> first time on our channel, please take time to like and subscribe. If you're a pre visitor, welcome back. The, uh, we actually shot a show today and uh, I thought that the news that broke on Tesla and the fact that the stock price was down uh, $30 uh, or so uh, warranted taking time to review kind of what's going on. Elon Musk indicated that, um, you know, they're going to cut about 3000 people as a way to get the company set up cost wise in anticipation of delivering a Model 3 at the $35,000 range that they're targeting. The obviously they're not there, otherwise they wouldn't have been cutting people. But you know, so obviously that's that's the focus of our conversation. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks for joining us once again. If this is your first time on our channel, please take time to like and subscribe. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. Um, and uh, wanted to thank our Patreon subscribers for your support. It makes a huge difference in terms of all aspects of the success of the channel. We typically put it three ads in our show. Sometimes Google cuts that into two smaller ads rather than just one. So uh, our goal is not to offend, but uh, by watching for 10 seconds or so, the ad do help us uh, make our channel work and we appreciate your support in that regard. So for the last month or so, almost two, um, and as an ongoing theme for the last couple of years on Tesla, we've been consistently amazed by the number of core business principles that Tesla violates and has been able to succeed nonetheless. Uh, on our channel, we've covered a number of, uh, of sort of business fundamental missteps by Tesla, but the company has seemed to weather those storms readily. Right now, um, the main reason why we thought that Tesla was in jeopardy of bankruptcy because of the success of the Model 3 is that it turns out that in business, what often happens is the larger the company is, the more that inefficiencies can drive it out of business because the amount of losses one can take on a larger scale are greater than they are on a smaller scale as a smaller company. One of the primary focuses of our, our uh, channel has been to sort of take a look at what we call sacred cows within Tesla, meaning that there is a large number of different things that Tesla does that are reflections of ideas that were good when it was a smaller company or ideas that were good um, that don't make sense anymore given the current size and, and sort of complexity of what the company is doing. So I wanted to review a few of those today. The first item that comes to mind is the fact that Tesla has announced that they're getting rid of the referral program. You know, there are a number of ways in which referrals were being used as a way to uh, thank those who've referred large numbers of customers to purchase Teslas. And I think this has been a, a good idea as a way to build brand loyalty and a relationship with all customers to help build the company. Obviously, the challenge is it's not going to work anymore. So as of February 1, uh, it's being gotten rid of. And the, the reasoning was that the costs were too high to be sustained. And I think it's a it's kind of bad for the people who've been building up uh, and successfully doing referrals, but it's been very hard on the company 
because while it doesn't have advertising budgets, the budgets related to uh, things like very expensive mall locations, as well as a referral program, are costs that the company really can't afford to do, and other companies typically don't do it. And so I think it's, for those of you who want who love Tesla and want to see it do well, the fact that they're getting rid of the referral fees is, a, is great news, should have been done before this. The second problem that's lurking and that is, I want to call a sacred cow that it'll be interesting how they figure out, is the lifetime uh, supercharging that they've given to early customers was a good build business idea. The problem though right now is that Tesla has to pay for that electricity and while Model 3 owners are going to be paying for their electricity as well as new buyers of Tesla, you have this legacy of large numbers of people who get free charging. I think this has actually created kind of a pain for Tesla because the goal has been to locate um, these supercharged locations in long distance spots so that it wouldn't be a routine use by regular customers. But the problem is that where new buyers are congregating tend to be near high density metro areas, at least in the United States, call it Washington, D.C. or New York or those places. And these individuals actually need uh, and want charging because often they don't have it in their condos or other locations. The problem that happens, though, is that um, given the uh, legacy obligations to Model S owners and X owners for free supercharging, you can't put money into building new facilities if there's a bunch of people that would be using those facilities for free. So as a result, I think the company is an interesting pickle as to um, how do you build new um, service facilities and have it paid for and not go out of business with all the electricity those people might use. So I don't have the answer to this, but it's a lurking cost rate on the company that's definitely affecting its ability to successfully move forward. The next thing that I wanted to sort of review in the sacred cow is the fact that um, the whole service strategy that Tesla has come up with is kind of a disaster. Um, clearly, those meeting parts have been able, unable to get it because the company just hasn't had the capital given having to build the new vehicles with those resources. So you're seeing a lot of folks who are kind of stuck out there with uh, uh, on long lines, months, if not a year long, waiting for certain parts to arrive to repair their vehicles. And Tesla's discussed fixing it, but it also has, has its hands tied because there are so many uh, of these folks and the amount they make on those parts is far lower than if that part was blended into a brand new vehicle. And this is for all the models. So in light of the cash squeaks that the company's experiencing, I think that those who are having service issues related to parts, et cetera, are not gonna see any relief for a decent amount of time still. The next thing I wanted to look at as a sacred cow is the, the how cars are serviced. Tesla, um, we talked about the parts already, and Tesla increased the number of uh, entities that were allowed to service the car, but they got no more parts in the process. So I just thought that was interesting that they did that, and Tesla's also gone to regional uh, sort of body shop repair facilities that are under the, under the company's uh, control as well to try to address this issue. And this removes the, the parts or, or body work needs uh, from what has to be done at a service center so one can therefore get more cars through the service center because they're not dealing with body uh, work issues. But you know, I don't know if this is expediting uh, how well or how fast people are getting their cars repaired. So, you know, the, there are a couple of other sacred cows that I think are amazing. And one is, um, I really think that there's a need right now to double or triple the number of uh, facilities available uh, for service uh, throughout the United States and probably out throughout the world, because the number of people that need service um, it is certainly there in terms of percentage of those sold, but that's, that number is growing rapidly. And I believe that um, we, there needs to be a spread out of where these service facilities are 
so you can reduce heavy mechanics driving around and driving to customer locations to deliver because this is like really inefficient as we move to the Model 3, but might have been okay with the Model X and S uh, circumstance, but um, the cast strain is severe. So I have to admit that it's disappointing what's happening with the stock price and the announcement and the layoffs, but I am kind of excited because what I notice happening for the company is that as the company becomes more professional and handles things in a manner that's uh, solid relative to operations, uh, operation fundamentals, it's only good news because it means that you end up with a stronger company in the long run that can perform better for all clients involved. Um, you know, the final sacred cow that seems kind of minor, but I think is huge, is the fact that um, the folks who are paying $150,000 for the car are getting the same service and, and handling as if they paid $50,000 for their car. So I really think that one of the things Tesla has not done and seems to be reluctant to do is to offer kind of a premium service package where um, the nature of how you're handled by the company would be completely different than how you're handled if you're uh, buying on the lower end because you can't build extra service into a low price car it really is built into the higher price cars based on the numbers people have put forward. And I do believe that those folks actually deserve um, way better service than they're getting uh, based on the fact that they're paying three times. I mean, $150,000 for a 100D performance is a lot of money. And uh, I just think that everything from how those customers are handled, where they go to purchase the car, and even, you know, when you watch the vehicles being shipped, uh, you know, that's a Ferrari. It isn't a Ferrari, but for cars above $100,000, they're typically shipped in enclosed containers to prevent any kind of paint damage related to them being open in transport. So Tesla has been saving money by simply putting plastic around the vehicles. But uh, I just think that this is, it makes sense based on a cost squeeze, but it doesn't make sense in terms of quality of service that should be going with and for a vehicle at this price point. So long way to statement to say, there are clear uh, um, examples of sacred cows that Tesla has that they need to get rid of in order to be successful. The one last one that comes to mind is these very expensive mall locations are huge in terms of getting people interested in the vehicle, which you don't need. You have interest and attention already but it's extremely expensive to have these um, mall showrooms all over that Tesla has in lieu of having uh, real repair service facilities. So I think that's the last uh, sort of get rid of that I think Tesla may and should move to in order to really put the company on solid footing because um, they get to know you can leave a couple of cars in the hallways of some of these malls for people to take a peek at to understand that the brand is for real, but you don't have to pay to have um, you know beautiful showrooms uh, that are open all the time, uh, that are extremely expensive on a square foot basis uh, to generate interest. So the final part of our thesis on will the Model 3 drive the company uh, into bankruptcy is that you know the bottom line is that there's a large number of small and large things. There are some things we can see so one of my mentors made a comment to me. He said, look, if I go into a factory and there's a light bulb off, I don't say there's a light bulb off. What I will say is that this entity has a maintenance problem. So I've run through a few of the items that we believe are quite obvious uh, that are uh, sacred cows that need to be addressed that are bleeding the company in terms of costs. I'd actually like to hear if any of you guys have any other things that you'd recommend they consider in terms of improving the operations, because we'd love to see Tesla do well headed into the future. The next question is kind of what happens to the stock price given where we are now and heading into earnings? And the answer is highly volatile, hence why uh, trading options, making sure you're, you're hedged is a good idea. So um, we believe that uh, the, the story will stay the same. The hedge funds will run for the exits. 
as soon as any bad news has occurred, exactly like the $30 fall in stock price today. And then I believe, we believe that what will happen is that there'll be a bounce back post facto. Um, and that bounce back uh, will be driven by great operating fundamentals, which I think the company is capable of given demand for the vehicles, particularly as the price points continue to decline uh, on the Model 3s and larger numbers of customers all over the world can afford uh, those prices. Uh, we look forward to any and all comments that you might have, especially if they're constructive, uh, would be awesome. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Uh, please uh, remember, um, you know, 20 legless before bed, good idea, and uh, uh, no eating. Uh, within two hours of going to bed so you don't get acid indigestion and potentially cancer from it. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight once again. Thank you for, for joining us. Please remember to like and subscribe. We could definitely use support on Patreon if you would. Tschüss, um, German, au revoir, French, le hitraut, Farsi, choda hafez. That's Farsi, le hitraut is Hebrew. Uh, in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk good, have a great day, and thanks for, for your time.